Hey, today I'm doing a video all about the nine factors I'm paying attention to in SEO this year for my websites. They're not the basics, and this is not a video to tell you not to do the basics. The basics are still super important, and you should be focusing on those. Producing good content, adding topical authority, and building that out, links, all of these things remain the same. However, if you're looking for a leg up, if you're looking to help future-proof your website, these factors are the ones I think are gonna move the needle this year. The first factor is Core Web Vitals. Now, Core Web Vitals in itself is nothing new. They've been around since 2020 or so. They're a set of user-centric metrics that measure key aspects of your website's performance, including load speed, interactivity, visual stability, blah, blah, blah. In essence, they're a user-focused interpretation of site speed. So I've never seen evidence that site speed is a true ranking factor. It seems to be a lot more like a tiebreaker. All things being equal, Google prefers faster sites over slower sites, obviously, but not in place or instead of good content and backlinks. Those are the real ranking factors. From an SEO standpoint, it's a bit like outrunning a bear. You don't need to be the fastest, you just don't wanna be the slowest. <laughs> However, with all that being said, site speed is really important. Providing a good user experience by optimizing for speed is good for the user, which is good for your site in the long run. It's also good for things like time on page. Higher time on page equals more ad revenue. More time on page also tends to equal more sales. So yeah, I'm all about for focusing on core web vitals this year. If you don't wanna deal with tweaking and testing a bunch, WP Rocket is a good plugin for this. It tends to get you most of the way there upon install and with a few tweaks and going into some of the details, you can get it even closer. In our audits at 201 Creative, my uh, marketing agency, image size tends to be the biggest culprit by far of what's slowing your site down. So you'll wanna make sure that you're controlling for both the dimensions of the images that you're uploading to your site and the actual file size. Next up, adding personalization. This one seems a little bit vague, but let me explain. Google's updates are coming in hot and heavy these days, and search is changing by the minute with AI. So here's two reasons that these factors point to the need for adding personalization. Google is most definitely targeting thin review affiliate content, right? Like the thin reviews that just pull and rephrase product details from Amazon. And AI will only increase in prevalence and content is gonna start sounding the same or closer to the same as if it doesn't already. So how do you stand out from AI while simultaneously avoiding Google's product review wrath? <laughs> I don't have a crystal ball, but adding personalization is a really good place to start. I'm adding statements to my articles and my content like this. When I first opened this product out of the box, the first time I started X up from my testing, from the three months I've used this, I can say, in my experience, you get the picture. It's not hard to do, and it helps convey a much better signal to Google and to everybody reading that you're actually a part of the content. By the way, pair this up with unique images of you using products or of you using what you're talking about. Now we're talking. Next up, embedding video. I've been focused on this since the May 2022 Google Core update. After that, lots more video started showing up in the SERPs. And articles that had relevant embedded video content seem to survive better in the rankings as well. Best case scenario, make your own videos. I've been doing this using nothing more than just my iPhone 14 to, to film videos and then upload them to a YouTube channel. Just make sure you pick up an external mic. Sound is the key on YouTube. People don't like watching videos with out of the box sound. The good news though is that smartphones like the iPhone 14 have image stabilization built in, so you don't really need to worry about a gimbal or anything like that. If you can't shoot your own, Embed other popular and relevant YouTube videos into your articles. Next on the list, tighter internal linking and anchor text. So we're all pretty familiar with how important internal links are, but it's also pretty easy to get a little carried away with your internal links, as I've done. You also have to pay attention to your internal link anchor text. Now, Google learns a lot about a specific page by the anchor text and the links that point to it. This means both external links and internal links. It's easy to get a little bit lazy about your internal link anchor text. I did an audit on one of my websites at the end of last year, and uh, well, some of the pages had a lot of internal links that weren't highly relevant. And the more irrelevant the links get, the more generic the anchor text tends to get. Now you can be pretty liberal with the anchor text you use, but you also don't wanna to be too generic about it because then Google doesn't really have a good idea for what your page is about. Pretty soon, if you're not careful, you're watering down the topical authority that internal linking can create. 
So this is the year for me of fewer internal links to articles, but much more focused internal linking. Not only the source link, but the anchor text as well. I use Link Whisper, it's a great tool. I'll include a link for that in the show notes. Unique images. Hey, you probably knew I would say this one. Granted, my previous career for over a decade was as a professional photographer, but pro or not, creating unique images is high ROI. It's high ROI return on investment because the return far exceeds the investment. In other words, it isn't hard to crank out a bunch of decent images quickly. All right, so you can take great photos with your phone. You don't actually really need a professional camera anymore. It doesn't take that much work to take photos that are good enough. That's why I say that it's super quick. You don't really need professional level images on your website. You just need photos that are compelling, that are unique, and that are good enough. Unique imagery is preferred by Google. They've come out and they've set it. They prefer it specifically for product reviews. It's a part of the experience portion of EEAT. And it makes a great connection with your audience. If they can actually see you interacting with the product or with whatever it is you're talking about, there is an increased connection there. Not to mention, you can actually get traffic from unique images. So I'll mention it because it's easy. We made a course teaching you how to take awesome photos for your website. A lot of website builders have said that it helped them, but self-promotion aside, take photos for your website. It's not hard and the ROI is very, very high. Helps set you apart and helps you survive any future things that might be going on with Google updates. Next up on the list, author and company validation. So if you haven't listened to the recent interview I did on the Niche Pursuits podcast with Kyle Roof, you should just stop what you're doing and go listen to that. It's absolutely fantastic. He outlines a step-by-step -step process for adding EEAT signals to your website. Literally, a checklist that you can go through. I'm not gonna pull from all of that. You should just go listen to that, take notes. You're gonna want a notepad and paper. But I realized that I was missing a huge opportunity. I wasn't connecting the dots for Google on my own websites. A lot of the stuff he talked about, I had in place, but I wasn't putting it into the best practices so that Google could easily see it. And chances are you might be doing the same thing. You might have good authors built out for your website. You might actually be a legitimate brand that knows what you're talking about, that has expertise, it has authority, but you're not connecting the dots so that Google can actually see it. One of the best and easiest ways to do that is using proper schema for your company information, your about page, your author pages. So you need, you need a company address, you need a phone number, your authors, they need to have the signals that are showing their real people. Basically, in summary, your website needs to be a real business. And so if you're not doing these things, you need to start. And if you are, but you're not connecting the dots for Google, then you need to connect those dots for them. Next up and speaking of is page level schema. I could have included this in the last one and just rolled them together, but I thought that they deserved to be separate topics. Schema is a form of structured data markup, and it can help to improve search rankings and visibility by providing additional context and information to search engines like Google. It's kind of like speaking the search bot's language. In many ways, it can give you a leg up because Google's bot will better understand your page and what's on it. A lot of SEO plugins will add the basic schema to your blog post and to your website, but you can really do a lot more. So I use Rank Math and I, I do recommend it. I, I recommend Rank Math Pro to do some of these advanced level things. Some of these advanced schemas, and I'm, I hate to use the word advanced, but schemas that go beyond the basics that a generic plugin will do are say FAQ schema for your question and answer sections, author schema, company schema, local schema, review schema, recipe schema. You see, the, you see what I'm saying? Um, I've been playing around with it tweaking and trying to get a template for us for making it all work just right. I have a video on how to get all of your schema lined up um, for EEAT using Rank Math plugin. So make sure to give that a check out if you are interested in deep diving this. Last but certainly not least, local citations. <laughs> citations feel a bit like 2015, but they're still a great way to build your brand entities for Google to see. Back in 2015, they were used for different reasons, but right now, they're really great to help Google understand more about you, your website, your business, and everything in between. So local citations are nothing more than just online mentions of your business's name, address, and phone number, otherwise known as NAP, on other websites and directories. They might include a link, might be no follow, doesn't matter as much. It's about mentioning your website and your business's name, address, some of these key details across the internet. So start by ensuring that your NAP information is accurate and it's consistent across all these online listings. 
uh, include your website, social media profiles, uh, local directories such as Google Business Profile. Uh, yeah, you should have one set up for your, your niche website. <laughs> But uh, citations, they're super easy to build, they're cheap to build, and they give you a leg up with EEAT. I will note though that if you don't build out your company entities on your site, I don't think citations will help you much. Citations will help substantiate what you've already established in my opinion. So go back up to one of my previous points where I talked about how you need to be doing all the things for your website. All right, now that's it. Remember, none of these things are a substitute for doing the basics right with your website and your SEO. Good content, building out topical authority, links, these are the keys and are still the hallmark metrics of a good SEO plan. But if you're looking for a leg up, if you're looking to maybe future-proof your website a bit, some of these tips might be a great way for you to get ahead of the curve. Remember, if you liked this video, please subscribe for more future content. And if you want to learn more about how to add some of these details to your website, take a look at the video I've created on adding some of the schema with Rank Math.